Hot off the press, Sigma has just announced a new firmware for the FP and FPL. And now in case you missed it, Sigma just announced in a live stream that they are going to be bringing a new firmware update to the FP and FPL. And so we're going to break down what's new with this update. Now, full disclosure, I did get a press release or an early press release for this update. And so I am recording this prior to the announcement. That being said, if things do play out differently with the announcement or if there's something I missed with this update, I will leave any updates or corrections in a pinned comment in the comment section below. So make sure you check that out. So diving right into what's new and what to expect with this update, there are a couple things that I didn't see as like major announcements or major benefits, but maybe minor ones. And so I'll mention those first. Things like focus frame only in stills mode, which does allow for you to change the display to have everything wiped off of the display other than your focus frame. Another thing that's nice is you can now power down the camera while you're doing a long exposure and that will help with obviously battery consumption. You will also get a new color profile which is warm gold. Now this would be a good time to say that there wasn't a beta copy of this firmware update sent out for people to test with but trust me once this becomes available I will be testing it out and give you guys some samples maybe post on Instagram so stay tuned for those samples with this new warm gold profile. So the next update comes by way of the director's viewfinder. With this new firmware for the FP and FPL, you will get some additional open gate de-squeezing options for the Alexa LF and LF Mini when you are using the director's viewfinder mode. Now, in my opinion, and I may be wrong, but those are some of the more minor things that come with this update. Let's talk about some of the major things that come with this update. Starting first with Atomos cloud support. Now, if you're not familiar, and I'm really not too familiar with it, but if you are are an Atomos user and if you're using a device that records to Atomos Cloud, the FP with this update will be able to take advantage of recording the Sigma FP footage to an Atomos device and ultimately to Atomos Cloud. And so that's a nice thing to see for Atomos users that want to use Atomos Cloud, they can now use it with the Sigma FP. The next major announcement for me with this firmware update is support for four terabyte drive to record to from the Sigma FP or FPL. Now, I don't know exactly, and it may be in the announcement, so check out the pinned comment, but I don't know exactly what drives are supported at this time, but I would venture to say with the SanDisk Extreme Pro being an already supported drive, there is a four terabyte version available. And so I would assume that that is one that is on the list. But again, if they mention anything about it, I'll put that in the pinned comment in the comment section. Now, the biggest thing, in my opinion, with this firmware update is the introduction to EL Zone. Now, if you're unfamiliar with EL Zone, this is an exposure tool very similar to False Color that was introduced by cinematographer Ed Lockman. And so this will be added to the Sigma FP as another option for exposure. Now, why EL Zone excites me and gets me really pumped up about this firmware update is because this is currently not available in any other camera that is a mirrorless hybrid cinema camera. It's really not available on many cameras, period. The only camera I really could find is the Panasonic Vericam, which is a full-fledged cinema camera, and it's also available on small HD monitors. Now, why EL Zone may be more beneficial than false color is for a couple of reasons. One, it does measure your exposure in stops rather than IRE percentages, and so it may just be more user-friendly on what level of ND you might need to use to get the exposure that you need out of that frame. And on top of that, it does take into account multiple skin tones, whereas maybe false color doesn't really take into account lighter and darker skin tones, EL Zone does actually do that. And so this is why I'm really pumped to see this EL Zone tool being implemented into the FP and FPL. And so those are some of the features that come from this new update for the FP and FPL. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the update. I'll be honest, I think initially I was a little bit underwhelmed with this update, but the more I researched 
search EL zone and all the things that are available and the things that are happening with this firmware update, I got more and more excited. This is something that I've come to love about the FP and how Sigma has approached this camera. They've really proven they're not on the same path that most hybrid cinema cameras are in right now. The things that Sigma is updating and doing is starting to tell me that they're just trying to find something that is a little bit different. And that has been the trademark and the thing that the FP has offered is something that not everyone else is doing. Not every other consumer or prosumer level camera can record uncompressed cinema DNG 4K raw internally or to an SSD. That's just not happening. Even now, most prosumer cameras are still recording compressed raw to a recorder, much less to an SSD uncompressed raw. Like this camera is doing something that no other camera is doing. And with this update, I can see that Sigma is trying to make this camera something that no other camera is. It's just a different approach and I love every bit of it. And I'm here for the ride. So trust me when I say when this firmware finally drops I will be updating and I'll give you guys an updated video maybe testing on a couple things telling you how I think about the firmware update so definitely stay tuned and if you're a Sigma FP owner I do a lot on this channel but I do primarily use the Sigma FP and talk about the Sigma FP and so if you're interested in Sigma FP or if you're an FP owner I would 100% subscribe to the channel. <laughs> so that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're digging the overall content from the channel, consider subscribing. As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Peace.